All right, so today we have something a little different. No, different for me. Um, got this old box in the mail. And what this is, is a ooh, brackets razor home, like a barber home. Comes in this cardboard box. Has some writing on the inside here. Directions. Uh, the end says something about patent office. I'm getting the impression this is kind of an old thing and that there might have been some paper instructions in here too, but I'm not really sure about that. Box is a little dilapidated, I just kind of tore a corner. Um, comes with a rubbing stone, which might look familiar, and it should because it's a piece of codical. Some sort of combo stone, I think, but I'm not even sure. Looks like it's been rounded and used on uh, the blue side and the top looks pretty good. And the stone itself comes in uh, this wood thing, this tray. Looks like it's meant to uh, protect it or something. Glued in place. If you look at it in the light, it's got some kind of texture to it. But when you catch the light, it's a little glossy. Now, what this is, according to the directions, is uh, like a hybrid. It says natural Brazilian quartz pebbles with a compound that's melted, poured, and then trued and sold as a barber home. Now, let me see if I got a ruler here. This is not flat. See that rocking? No good. Same here. So, either this is worn, or their idea of truing is not exactly in line with what I think is true. But anyway, I was excited because I've always wanted one, and um, I looked out on uh, that famous auction site. I love barber homes, and this being comprised of, you know, theoretically of some kind of natural material. Seem kind of cool. Now, um, instructions. Oh, look at that. I don't even see like coloring in stone. Or maybe it's underneath it. I don't know. It's, it almost looks like it's underneath, like glue or something. I don't know. Anyway, uh, the instructions say to wet it. Rub it down with the lighter colored side. It says to build a lather. All right, so I've done that. And the reason I'm doing this without lapping it is because I just want to check it out. So I'm using this Wolsey pipe that really needs a bevel set just to sort of get a feel of it. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, that's doing something. And it's not just the cotty slurry. There's a felt resistance. There's a friction, a notable friction. It's very hard. It feels very hard. At the same time, doesn't have that glassy sort of agate feel to it, which, you know, could be due in part because the top is, you know, in my opinion, beat up, but I'm not going to mess with it. Until I know exactly what I'm doing. With. The other thing is, if it's even 
close to being like agate. It is not going to be fun to lap this. Oddly, it feels softer than most agates. And I'm talking, you know, splitting hairs here. Wispy sound is pretty loud. Now the instructions say that you shouldn't need a lot of these strokes on this cotty slurry unless your edge is exceedingly dull, which is basically what this Wosty pipe is. I mean, it'll cut you, but it ain't shaving sharp either. Feedback is smoothing out, but it still feels gritty in there. Not gritty like sand, but some. Alright, so let me wipe that off. Alright, spray this down. And then, in the instructions, it says to follow with laps on water. Still not clear. Pulled me. <clears throat> okay. And I was out, as out of whack as this top is, you know, the top of this stone. Oh, by the way, this is supposed to bring up the smoothness in the edge, according to the directions. It says that the uh, Cotty slurry will leave sharp but rough, and this will smooth. bit of a look under the loop. Striations are pronounced. If I had a guess I would compare this to a 5k synth edge. That's on a gist scale from Japan. Not a Norton edge. <clears throat> Let's see if I can catch the light here a little bit. Yeah. Striations are very pronounced. I also have striations running up over the uh, Shinogi. But I don't know that that wasn't there before. Because I really didn't inspect this blade. So there is some cutting going on. Let me feel it with my thumb. No, it's dull as crap. All right, what I think, I think for this stone to have any merit, I'm gonna have to lap it down. And I think uh, make it flat, polish it up, and then give it another whirl. See what happens then. Stay tuned. All right, so um, it's lap now. You can see one corner here didn't get picked up. Um, the reason for that is I got tired of lapping it. Uh, I started with a 400 Atoma, and it was cutting some stone, or whatever you want to call this stuff. 
but then I moved to a 140 Atoma because it wasn't moving fast enough. I could see the little flat area starting in the center. It was getting bigger, but it was going too slow. And, uh, well, I broke out the SIC powder, silicon carbide sick. And that worked a little bit faster. I used uh, 220 grit, then 400. I went on 400 a bunch of times to smooth it out. You can still see there's some errant scratches, but now it's pretty smooth. And, uh, you know, under a loop, you know, the surface of this stone does not take on a polish like an agate. Maybe shiny, maybe smooth, but there's surface down there that you don't get from a natural agate kind of like uh, you would get like a glass, a real glassy surface that would be uninterrupted and perfectly smooth or real close to it. At 10x, which is what this loop is, if this was natural agate, it, it would look a lot smoother than this does. That doesn't mean nothing, you know, but I'm just saying. So, you know what I'm going to do here. Yeah, that's a little better. Uh -huh. Totally different feel with the cottage thing here. I mean, first of all, the slurries don't stick into it. And, uh, it slurried up completely differently. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now the surface feels nice. So what I can gather is this stone's been around, probably stored improperly, exposed to extremes and temperatures, humidity, maybe not covered for a long time. Could have been the box was like, you know, they put it inside the lid sometimes. This feels more like a regular Honda. So the surface of the stone, between using it and storing it poorly, seemed to have been weathered, somewhat maybe disintegrated a little bit, rough, uneven. None of these things are good for a razor home. It's Especially a finishing home. You now some barbers homes, if you look at them, like a carver on them, they'll be quite coarse. And if you look at the edges, they make, I guess you could say, a pretty hard looking edge. Do you notice there's no swath though? This was a cotty. I'm pretty sure, you know, a cotical. I'm pretty sure I'd have like some metal in that slurry and it would be pretty swarfy looking. Anyway, if you look at that carborundum and the edge it gives, it could be pretty horrific looking. You know, they cut fast, they're furious. Take a non-shaving razor and make it shave, but it's not going to turn a razor in. You know, I remember long ago, then when that for the most part, they were worried about getting the shave done. It being a reasonable shave. I've read a million old pamphlets and booklets and what have you. and I've yet to come across reference to BBS shaves and three pass and all of that stuff. Mapping the green, yes. Typical stuff for the proficient barber, yes. But I don't think long ago people were the way they are today, all geeked out over absolute perfection. And theories about who's shaving with the best edge or 
any of that other social media based bullshit. Alright, so, anyway, starting to feel like I got a little bit of swarf up in the slurry. So I'm saying to myself, no, well, this appears to be a slow stone. No, I'm working with conical slurry. Undercut's pretty good. Now remember, you know, this isn't an edge I'm going to shave with. I still have yet to set the bevel on this and work it up. But all I'm doing right now is taking a look at it, the stone seeing what it's doing to the bevel, giving it a feel, giving it a first look, giving it a check out. Still dull as a doll now. Um, that's to be expected. Here's a 4x loop this time. Trying to catch the light here. Striations look better. Much better. Much finer. More consistent. Okay, I have a better feeling about this stone though. <clears throat> if I had a judge from before, which wouldn't have been a smart thing to do. I'd say, oh yeah, see, so it came off another blade, so there is swap. Anyway, um, I judge from before, my first run through, I probably just put this thing in a drawer and forget about it. Guy I know from the shaving forums, Ian, I respect his opinion. And uh, he says these things are great. So I want to give it a whirl. When I say he says these things are great, I'm talking about these Brazilian homes. I read a couple other people rave about them too, but people rave about all kinds of shit on the web. Because a bunch of people are jumping up and down and making noise about something. Don't mean squat. Could be shaving brushes. Nah, this isn't working for me. Things in my way than that. Um, like I was saying, shaving brushes, shaving soaps, brands of razors. Remember the great double duck craze? Then the Darko craze. Oh, don't get me wrong. Darkos and ducks can be great razors. But this Wolsty, when it's honed up, will shave like a dream and you'd be hard pressed to prove to me that using a darko or a duck or a whatever is going to be any better in fact I'm going to tell you right now I know it won't be because I've had ducks and darkos in fact I probably still have a couple of darkos and I might even have a duck yeah I do Right over here. Okay. <clears throat> and 
Anyway, back to this thumb. Has a nice feel. I went back and read Ian's report of this thing. He said it was painfully slow. Now, maybe he didn't say painful, but he alluded to it being very slow. I got a bunch of laps on it. See what came off. Yeah. A little bit of discoloration. Took some metal out. Could have been left over from before. Striations are there, but on top there's uh, a new level of polish. So, what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a blade, maybe this one, maybe I'll finally hone that. After playing with uh, this hone for a little bit, um, it's been like three weeks involved here. Um, I didn't make this video like all in one day. Um, a lot of my uh, clips are like that. Um, reason for that is, you know, it takes time to try stuff out. You know, I can hone an edge, put it on the scope, look at it, talk about it. Uh, go shave with it once, but you know you got to shave with it a few times. I think to really get a total read uh, on anything um, that gives you like a, a broader overview of um, what it is you're talking about. So anyway, so remember I lap this, and uh, you can see the corners here are still a little down, but uh, they're good enough uh, for the time being. And um, I had owned up a razor and shaved on it, and then uh, went to this and, you know, the following night, maybe 50 laps or something like that. I don't know. I don't count, but it just seemed like it could have been about 50, just straight, you know, with water. And I shaved with that, and then I shaved with that edge a little bit, and I went back, and I used the cotty thing here, made the slurry, and worked through, and then did the water thing, shaved with that, and... Yeah, so I got a bunch of shaves in um, on one razor uh, off this stone, you know, and uh, gives me a nice overview of it. Now, um, I also, you know, in the middle of all of this, um, I got another one. Uh, this one comes from a friend of mine, in Wet Shaving World. Um, his name's Rick. Um, one of those things that happens, I didn't even realize it was his stone. I bid on it and got this notice I won and then you know you let me know he said hey Keith I think you won my stone blah 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 um you know and he followed up and asked me if everything was like you know straight and you know he's a good guy like that anyway I, I told him yeah it's all good and I did a little back and forth comparison between the two and um the one from Rick which is this one here right uh this came in better condition way better um you know, the wood, about the same, you know, but I'm talking about, you know, the wood, uh, the stone is flat. Um, bricks came in much flatter, which was much appreciated. Uh, this one was hellish uh, to lap, but it did lap it, and I could have kept going and brought all the corners up 100% perfect, but um, <clears throat> for my purposes, I didn't really need that. I was, like, testing more than anything else, and... Uh, if I decide to uh, make it a regular thing, I would definitely go back and, and lap again. Although, you know, this oval here is more than enough to uh, deal with the razor pretty well. I believe in flat, um, but I also believe in cutting corners sometimes when I'm just uh, checking stuff out. Now, <clears throat> what I think is, um, as far as it being a barber home, it's an excellent barber home. I'm not going to assign a, a grit rating to it because it, it's kind of ridiculous to do that. Um, I did scope one edge. I didn't image it because, well, didn't have the time. Christmas, everything going on. You know, I just set up a tree like a couple of minutes ago, and I have to get back to that shortly. Uh, razor honing, new stones, everything. I just don't have the time to, like, make photographs all the time. But anyway, the bevel on that razor was very, very polished. And the edge looked really true and really nice. There were a couple of errant scratches, gouges, but, you know, when I say gouge, I don't mean like, you know, 
in the Marianas Trench, just like a rogue uh, scratch in there. Um, I looked at the surface of the stone on the magnification. Appears to be something embedded in the matrix, this quartz stuff. It could be like aluminum oxide or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, the particles seem to be fairly large, but I'm guessing that because this is um, sintered, fused, the fact that they're large isn't affecting um, the honing the way it would if it was a loose uh, powder on a you know substrate or embedded into a soft binder that was going to wear away like you know a regular water stone. So um, this is a pretty good home. You know, um, you can be really happy with this. Um, it's different than, like, say, a Frictionite. Frictionite edge has more bite to it. The edge off of this is uh, notably smoother. Um, sharpness, I think they're about the same. Um, maybe the Frictionite is a little bit more cutting efficiency because it's a little more toothy. I don't know. It's like splitting hair stuff that, like, I don't like to get into. Um, you know. It's about shaving, and you can shave with this stump, you know. The thing is, though, it's slow. So, like, if you let the edge go too far back, you know, they give you this conical thing to help you, like, get, you know, the edge a little more forward before you come to this. But I wasn't really jazzed about using uh, the Cotty Slurry on here. It's not like, I'd rather just grab a conical. You know, this is like sort of a, I don't know, half-baked attempt to try and like, you know, help out the consumer. And it does help, but it's just not my thing. I would almost ignore that. Uh, the way I would use this, I would, uh, like every four or five shaves, before the edge doesn't feel crisp anymore, um, just go a boatload of laps on this and think it'll tune the edge up. Um, you haven't felt it yet, but it's just going to like bring it back and then you'll have that like fresh off the stone edge um, Not everyone wants to do that, but it's like sort of a preventative maintenance thing. If you let the edge go too far back Working it on this with just water is going to be a painful experience And if you're like me, you're really not going to be jazzed with the cortical slurry on here. It's an interesting approach, but um Honestly, I think I'd be better off with uh, some sort of Macau and Nagur uh, than the Codical Slurry. Um, that's just me, and I haven't tested that theory, but uh, eventually I'll get to it. I'm going to have to start leaving like a piece of coma in the bathroom or something. Um, and see how that works. Uh, my experience with using uh, Nagur on you know hard stones that aren't JNATs yeah, hasn't been stellar. You know? Um, you know, another alternative would be, you know, if my edge is going, or I think it's going to start going in about a week, I could come in with uh, a JNAT and Toma to grow slurry and just bring the edge up, you know, from there. Might be about the same amount of time and laps and stuff, maybe longer actually. Um, but this is a little bit more of a bulky package. So, like, if I was traveling or I don't have a lot of room in the bathroom. Or I'm just, you know, not knee deep in stones and all like geeked out over, you know, which stone is giving me the best edge. Let's just say I just wanted the shaving edge and I wanted to keep it going. This will do it. It will totally do it. Um, light years ahead of most barber homes. You know, it's in the upper echelon of barber home world. Um, got this nice tray so it's easy to work with package isn't that like trim but it's really not that bulky either um, nice stuff you know um, anyone would be uh, served well by having one of these around you know kind of interesting you know I would like to actually try and take it out of the wood and see what that's all about but I think the wood is here for more than just like cosmetics and, and handling I'm guessing is kind of brittle and the wood sort of protects it and I'm also going to guess that taking it out of the wood would be a royal pain in the ass and probably damage the stone, so I'm going to leave it. Um, I like to tinker with stuff, but I'm not going to tinker with this. Anyway, um, great stone. I, 
I'd like to say I endorse it, but you can't like just roll out and buy one. But if you do come across one um, and it's not priced too high, I'd say pick it up because it's kind of cool. All right, that's it.